largest country in Central America, it all started when three settlers sailed the seas. These three settlers were three brothers looking for mainland to claim. This Spanish settler, Pedro de Alvarado, being the oldest of the three, took the lead and brought them to Guatemala where they could claim the land. The main thing you're probably wondering is what does this have anything to do with Guatemala and the citizens? Well, the Spanish had a big effect on the mines and have shaped them in their culture. But how did the Spanish change the Mayans and their culture? In 1523, the Spanish conquered the Mayans. The Spanish ruled the Mayans for quite some time. Spain's rule over the Mayans lasted from the 1500s to the 1800s. Since the Spanish ruled for 300 years, it allowed Spain's ingredients like spices or seasonings to flow into Guatemala's traditional food. Spain has put a twist on Guatemala's cuisine and have changed their food to be more like Spain's. As you can see, the Spanish settlers who conquered the Mayans have made a huge impact on the people who live there and their country. Even though the Spanish left, they left influencing their taste in food. Guatemala. Over many years, it has been the victim of wars and an authoritarian streak. It has been heavily affected by military leaders. But now, there is hope. This is the political story of Guatemala. When Guatemala became a country in 1841, like most countries, Guatemala got off to a rough start. Up until about 1944, Guatemala had an authoritarian streak, a stretch of time when several dictatorships happened. They had many military governments, such as dictatorships. It was so bad that at some elections, Soldiers were holding people at gunpoint to vote for someone. This may seem surprising, but the United States was largely involved in the government of Guatemala with the United Fruit Company. Due to Guatemala's great soil, the United Fruit Company saw opportunity. This company had such a huge role in government as it was Guatemala's main trading partner. It almost controlled the government. After a few brief uprisings in the 40s and 50s, the official Guatemalan Civil War began. The original Mayan Indian groups were undergoing major human rights violations and were furious. In 1960, Guatemala's 36-year civil war started between the many guerrilla groups and the government. For the first 30 years, many guerrilla groups fought the government. Then, in the later stages of the war, all the guerrilla groups joined into one fearsome group called URNG. The war continued on until 1996, claiming many lives. Today, Guatemala has a representative democracy. They still have good trade, but not controlling the country. The president is Otto Perez Molina. Today, the U.S. is helping make Guatemala a better place, as they still have much crime, murder, and gangs. Guatemala has changed for the better. Now, on election day, because of what they did in Guatemala's past, active military personnel are restricted to their barracks and not allowed to vote. The country is still very poor as the war has taken its toll. These are just some of the examples of how Guatemala has changed. However, the future is bright for Guatemala, as the United States is coming up with a project led by Joe Biden, the United States Vice President, to help Central American countries in need, like Guatemala. They are teaching kids what is right, in hopes of reducing the crime rate, which largely exists in Guatemala. This is truly a country on the rebound. The country of Guatemala has been through a lot to get to where it is today. People work together to shape the country in a positive direction. 
the wars and conflict have also had an effect on Guatemala. The war today has been a big effect to shape the country. The Mexican-Guatemalan War Since November 1956, the Guatemalan and Mexican governments have quarreled over the crossing of Guatemalan borders by Mexican citizens. On November 8, 1957, the Guatemalan Foreign Minister Alfredo Ortiz sent a diplomatic letter to the Mexican government which detailed the complaints of Guatemalan government. Ortiz said that Mexican shrimping boats were, were frequently crossing the national border into Guatemala to fish. He also reported that trees were being cut down by Mexican workers in the number one northwest Guatemalan province of Petén. As Guatemalan protests in Guatemalan City spoke out against the politicas of the government, newly elected president sat up to set Fox causes in order to quell the spread of the more civil unrest. The of the Guatemalan Air Force, the affirmed flight says sent several Mexican T-6 Texans and 28. T-28 Trojans, armed with machine guns and Napoleon bombs, entered Guatemala airspace intending to strike Lower Ontario Airport. Just as the aircraft approached their target, urgent orders were received to abort mission, the newly elected Mexican president, not wanting to endure any political repercussions from further escalating the situation, opted the meditate to the situation to the issue diplomatical. The civil war began with a had a big effect on the people and have prepared them for the future. The Civil War all started when the leftist rebels disagreed with the government. The Civil War ran for 36 long years. The government forces had been condemned for committing geocide against the Mayan population and widespread for human rights against the Mayan population. Democrat elections during the Guatemalan Revolution in 1944 and 1951 had brought popular leftist groups to power. But then the United States decided to put the military in. In 1954, this was followed by a series of leftist groups who were followed by military dictators, following with the social discount to, 19 to the people. During the 1980s, the Guatemalan military had almost absolute government control for power. Power For five years, it had successfully eliminated enemies in every so political parts of the nation. But then the leftist rebels fought back. And the Guatemalan government had decided to put in death squads, meaning that they would execute anyone who tried to get in their way. Although this did not work, the leftist rebels had almost reigned power, but the government decided to sign a peace treaty with the leftist rebels. The leftist rebels agreed and said they would sign the peace treaty. This was a good thing for the people so that there was no fighting going on anymore. As you can see, Guatemala is a very interesting country who has lots of great people.